<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Twine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for the next Halloween special number four. So I've got the set the way it was supposed to be done. I don't know what my background is going to be, but now I finally turned, turned on the lights because I got a green screen today. Last year I didn't put the green screen lights on, I just had the light over here. And anyway, we've got the set from last year. Uh, Horatio's come back. He's uh, a little bit elevated now. Got my little cauldron going. We got three wines to do today. Now, no uh, Halloween candy, but we're going to do the Halloween themed wines one more time. Now, um, I went to World Market where it seems like I always go for Halloween wines because, well, they seem to have stock of uh, themed wines or wines for Halloween, which is, which is really good because uh, that way I have to drive all around. And yeah, I kind of like the World Market selection. Haven't bought anything from them in a while. Hell, I haven't done a video in a while. It's great to be back on the set. Well, okay, different set. But it's great to be back, uh, taking a couple months off. Uh, a little housekeeping business, you know, went to New Jersey for vacation, uh, did some wine tasting there. Yeah, so New Jersey wine. There was, some, there was a couple there, all right. But they sure love blueberry wine up there, let me tell you. But uh, let's get right into Halloween, all right? So that's what we're here for. So these are wines that I picked really because of the name uh, of, the, of the bottle. Um, there wasn't really anything other than that. Um, however, so we're gonna go with the first wine. Now, uh, like last year, I did get a white wine. This year I'm doing another white wine to start off. Uh, this is the Vampire Chardonnay. Now I'll have pictures of the labels. Uh, this is from, uh, well, it says California. It's a 2011 uh, vintage. I paid $7.99 for this. I paid $9.99 for this. It's normally $10.99 at World Market, but with the World Explorer program. You don't have, uh, you get, get a little discount on some of the wines. Not everything, some things aren't discounted, whether it's wine or food or furniture or whatever. But uh, in this case, uh, this particular wine was discounted a buck. So that's good. Um, vampire wine, let's talk about vampire wine real quick. They've been around for a long time. Now I did a vampire Pinot Noir, the first Halloween special. I didn't go back and look at it. I didn't see if I liked it or not. And it was from France, I believe. And that's kind of where they got their start was they, they did a, a wine from France and they uh, brought it in the United States. Now, the problem is with the website, they, may, maybe a few years ago they would have had a serious like about, you know, history of, of the wine. Now it's as convoluted, you know, make you think that the dude that started it, which was Michael, uh, I can't remember the last name now. I'll put it down there. So I remember his like, last name. Uh, but he's, a, he's actually a pretty, pretty powerful attorney out of California. And I guess somewhere along the line in, in the late 80s, because uh, they have a history, it's just kind of, it's been fictionalized a little bit, um, or whatever. He supposedly met some mysterious hitchhiker driving out to California in, while he was driving through Nevada. Okay, so the, they basically make you think the hitchhikers is vampire or some type of head of the vampire guild or whatever. So, um, but they go through this convoluted story about, you know, where they did this, that, and the other, and it, it, kind, of, it kind of mirrors Michael's biography. He was a, he's a lawyer. He was in London for a while. He was part of the rave scene. He's done a lot of legal representation and managed some uh, uh, music, musicians, uh, notably Seal. Uh, was one of them and uh, was big into the, well not big, but he was part of or he was involved in the rave scene as far as like he I guess represented some of the acts in London and uh, so they did wines out of France, they did wines out of Transylvania that's one of the other ones, it's the Merlot Rosé interesting by the way um, and then most of the other wines are from California, like this one. Now it doesn't say Central Coast, but they do say in their in their uh, literature or the, on the website that mostly everything comes from Central Coast of uh, California. Um, they talk about the climate's perfect for this and blah blah blah. Um, he also married this woman named Lady Dominique. I think that's her name. Uh, so I guess she's also kind of one of the big people for this. But she's also a musician. Uh, was a singer, uh, big in England. So. Um, 
So they, they've got a, a true backstory, but at the same time, they've created this fictionalized account of vampires and all this stuff. And they got a bunch of stuff. I didn't realize this. They've got wine. They've, I almost did some beer. Honestly, I almost... Like bought a couple bottles of wine and did one of these these uh, Halloween themed beers. Like they had a witch's brew. They have a there's a vampire one you know from them, but there was something called witch's brew and some other you know fall type uh, beers would be actually kind of neat for a Halloween or a fall type of show. But anyway, uh, but they've got that. They've got some type of cola called Drac Dracola. Couldn't really find anything else about that. It, they, they want me to use Flash and I. Just have the system, whatever. I have flash disabled on the computer, upgraded everything. But anyway, so uh, but they got a lot of stuff, dude. So check it out. I got the link down below. Vampire Vineyards, but it's like vampire.com. That they have vampire.com, by the way. And I mentioned in the first time I did this special that they must have gotten this URL really, really early or paid a lot for it. Now that I know the guy is a former attorney, or is actually still an attorney. Um, he may have hopped on that stuff real quick. Uh, may have been one, you know, got, you know, figured out the internet might have, might be a big thing. So he might have got onto that really early and got the vampire brand because he had wanted to use the vampire brand for a while for wine. Okay, so anyway, so uh, I got the goblet again. I need to get the one that lights up one more time, but that was all plastic. This is actually at least kind of glass, I guess. It's glass, yeah. It dings like glass. So, uh, don't, don't uh, swirl too much because it is, that's the only thing you like when you have glasses that have that, like that, then the wine kind of, like last year it did. So anyway, um, so Chardonnay, um, let's check it out. Now, I chilled the wine, it's been out for probably about an hour, because I was setting everything up. On the nose, Kind of apple-y. Um, not much else on it. Maybe some citrus. Don't want to hit that microphone too hard down there. Probably a bunch of. Here, let's adjust the microphone real quick so it's a little bit farther down. So that when I'm. And I got this string coming out. There we go. All right, so now when I bend down, I'm not hitting it. I'm gonna put a little bit more, a little bit more wine in there. I'm gonna be drinking the wine today. Like I said, no Halloween candy this year. I kind of figured that made things go a little bit long. I mean, we had an hour show and it was because I was pairing candy with it. You know, for 10 bucks, it's not a bad Chardonnay. Again, it's got a bit of the apple to it. Um, they talk about that they 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 uh, rested it on lees when they did the uh, uh, the dead yeast cells um, when they when they were making the wine. Um, it's supposed to give it a little of a creamy texture. Uh, it does do that, but it's more of appley. It's almost kind of like apple candy, like you know, like apple sour. I mean, it, it, it's it's not really huge. It's just like kind of makes me think if I've got to think of stuff, maybe a kind of an apple sour type of thing. But um, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, for nine ninety nine, I paid no. Sorry, I paid yeah for nine ninety nine. So ten bucks. It's it's a drinkable, very drinkable Chardonnay. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I mean, we know we don't score anymore, but I would. If somebody was like, "Hey, I'd like to get some wine," and they're having a Halloween party and they want something that's actually decent that you could drink, and it's a Chardonnay because maybe not everybody wants to drink red wine, I would totally recommend this. I mean, especially for the Halloween theme party, you've got to remember these. Now, some of these wines are kind of seriously priced. I mean, the other two aren't like ten dollar bottles. Not that they're hundred dollar bottles either, but um, but I mean, if you're going to the Halloween party, you gotta do the wine. You know, hopefully these are wines that are all gonna you know show well. And, and the Chardonnay, it's it's reasonable. It's it's not too expensive. 
you can bring a bottle to the party and uh, you know have some white wine. It's it's pretty decent. I would totally recommend it. I mean, it's it's it's. I don't get a ton out of it. That's that's the thing. I mean, yeah, I get the apple. There's a bit of creaminess to it. There's 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 a hint of citrus, um, more of a lime rather than lemon. Maybe even a little bit of honey to it, but it's pretty good. It's really pretty decent. I gotta finish it now because I don't have a spit bucket to pour it into. Do you remember that year I did? Oh, we, yeah. If, did you watch the year I had the little call like this Horatio sitting on top of a cauldron here? It's got these plastic cauldrons from Walmart, and there's a hole in the bottom of it. Of it. Well, the first year I did, I think it was the first year. The first year I had the cauldrons. I spit into the bucket. And then as I pull up the bucket and spit into it, I see the hole. And I was like, oops. And I think I drank all the wine that year, too. It's really not bad. Um, oh, yeah, the back. All right, so the back of it has this little poem. I'm not going to read it. I'll let, you buy, I'll let you buy the bottle or at least go somewhere and find it. But it's uh, a poem from Lord Byron. So, uh, pretty decent. Uh, 2011, like I said. And uh, this place has been around for a while, since the late 80s, actually. Uh, they started, uh, he's uh, Michael, ah, oh, man, I can't believe I can't remember the guy. And I don't want to get up and look at the computer either. But um, uh, the place has been around for a while. I mean, they really started getting serious with the wine in the mid to late 90s is when they started getting real serious, like 94. I guess he, he moved back to, or moved to California at this point or moved back to the States. Um, but yeah, they, they've got lots of wines. I'm really interested in trying that Merlot Rosé, besides that it's Romanian. Um, just a Merlot Rosé would be kind of cool to try, don't you think? I do. I think so. All right, so let's move on to wine number two. Now, this one I bought completely because of the label. Now, when I was at World Market, now I, when I walked in, they had you know, they were little Halloween displays of stuff. Well, they had displays of wines, and some of them were kind of Halloween themed or holiday themed. There's a bunch of Christmas wine or Christmas themed wine um, that they had called Electric Reindeer. I'm half tempted to buy three of those bottles next time because they have a ton of different ones and just have a completely electric reindeer thing. But then they also had a mulled wine from Germany. I almost bought that too, but I'm thinking maybe I'll buy it for Christmas because I'll probably still have it out there. And I knew I did the mulled wine the one year and we actually you know, showed how to do it. I wasn't really impressed with it. but. Uh, and then we had another wine that was already mulled, so and again, I really wasn't impressed with it. But maybe I'll do this one from Germany, because it might be kind of interesting. Um, so we'll, maybe we'll do that one, and I don't know what else we'll do for Christmas wine. But anyway, so I walked all the way to the back, and I looked for more wines, because you know, the wines were the front. I didn't see a lot of Halloween-themed wines. I saw a lot of wines. And then I went to the back, I found a few ones. This is one of the ones I found, so it's called Cryptic. Um, it is a blend of a few varietals. It's 2010, it's California. Uh, it is the Cryptic Wine Company. Um, now, this particular wine uh, is pretty cryptic as far as who runs it. Uh, they, they go, oh, our, 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 we can't tell you who the winemaker is, and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's been around for a little bit. Um, it is a combination of Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Petit Syrah, and Zinfandel. And, and the funny reason, the funny thing, or the reason why I had to think for a second is because on the back of the bottle, they have anagrams or whatever of the three varietals. So. And I was like, I know Cabernet, Zinfandel. I was like, what's the other one? Had it, had it like real quick. I'm like, what's, what's, uh, how, how do they spell it? It's um, Teptirisa, Petit Syrah. Anyway, um, it looked pretty interesting. Uh, I paid 18, no, 13.99. It is normally 17.99. So not a cheap bottle of wine, or an inexpensive bottle of wine. You know what? 
That's one of the things about the word cheap. Unfortunately, cheap means poor quality and not just a value. But, so we're hoping that this wine will be of value. Um, I like the blend, Cab, Petit Syrah, and uh, Zin. Uh, I believe they said it was a field blend. Um, and let's see, was it, uh, no, that was the other one, the next one. But um, there was, I didn't get a whole lot out of them and when they started and all that, but uh, the uh, uh, they get it from three different areas, and I forgot where they get it from. They, that was from like the trade stuff. Um, Paso Robles, I think, was one. I think Sonoma and Central Coast, but I'd have to look those up again. But they, they get the grapes, they source the grapes from different parts of California, uh, and actually in the, on the little the trade thing they told you exactly how much of each percentage and uh, how much oak they was used and how much was new and how much wasn't new so uh, it was pretty interesting as much as, as interesting as you can from a cryptic website about the wine you know it's, it's again a lot of fluff but um, I'm excited to try it and I can already smell it so this might be pretty decent wine now one of the things I got almost right off the bat was bacon fat. Now, I don't get a lot of bacon necessarily from wine or bacon fat, but it had that, that savoriness to it. So it could be a little bit of bacony or like smoked ribs, you know, barbecued type of stuff. You know, something smoked meat. Uh, some red fruits, typically, you know, most red wines are gonna give you red fruits. Some will give you black, and some will give you blue fruits, like blueberries. Um, not so much here, I gotta be real careful, because I don't want the wine to spill out. A little vanilla on it. Not much else, but that savoriness was, was really what hit me at first. And it's still kind of there, it almost, almost woodsy, almost a little bit of wood on it. So, we got that. Now, The woodsiness and the greenness continue on. And there's this kind of cherry part to it. Now I'm getting a little bit of creaminess, a little vanilla. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of juicy, it feels a little juicy. And in, in some ways, I want to say it feels a little wet or watery. And I don't want it to come across as that the wine is watered down or weak, but there's kind of like this like I bit into, you know, some fruit and you have that juiciness of the fruit, you get the flavors and the juiciness of the fruit. Um, it is a little fleshy too, a little bit fleshy. Tannins are about, our tannins are moderate, They're not over the top tannins. Uh, I feel on the gum right here, but not much else. Acidity is really low. Um, I don't think it's really high in the alcohol. I mean, I, I would be surprised if it was above 14. It might be right at 14. And it's kind of hard to tell in this lighting. Let's see if I can get another angle on this. Don't know, because it's not on the front of the bottle. It's probably in the back somewhere. But anyway, sorry, I got the sniffles today. A little congested. Forgot to take my allergy medicine today. But anyway, um, it's pretty decent, actually. Um, I kind of like it. Yeah, there's, there's almost like a fleshiness to it. And there's a little bit more. Now you get a little more spice to it. You know, this is from the wood. <laughs> there was something on the palate I got when I first had it. 
and it was like, I really had the wine in there for a while. So I'm gonna try one more time, I'm gonna let the wine sit in there, because I think there's something that I'm missing. <laughs> There was, I guess, a spiciness to it, like um, greenness, a green spiciness to it. Um, it it's, it's kind of rustic. Uh, it's got the fruit. It's got a little bit of rusticness, rusticness to it. To it, um, kind of woodsy. I mean, it's right. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, again, another wine you can bring to a party, a Halloween party. And almost anything you bring to a Halloween party, people are gonna be like, oh my God, this is awesome, because they're, they're at a party and they're drinking alcohol. So it's gonna taste good no matter what. So we bring that to the party, they're gonna think it's the best wine ever. They have it a few days later, they're still gonna go, this is pretty good wine. And that is an indicator of a wine that's well made. Wines that are drunk at, at events, at, at celebrations, uh, are almost always really good wines. And sometimes, oh my goodness, I can't believe how good this wine is. I have to buy some. And then you buy it a few days later, or a few weeks, or a few months later, and then you find out that the wine really wasn't that good. It was just that the event was a lot of fun. Therefore, the wine was good. But yeah, I, I like this wine. Now, last year I did, you know, I talked about doing the whole <coughs> um, candy pairing. Now, at a party, you will probably have some food of some sort, maybe. Um, but if you, I mean, it's it's the over, it's the overused and the whatever um, chocolate and, and red wine pairing. But I totally can see, you know, all the, the milk chocolate type candies going with that. Um, Caramel apple with with the Chardonnay. I've already done these, so I'm not, that's why I wasn't gonna do them again. I've already done caramel apple, which was pretty freaking awesome that year. Um, and I've done the candy and all that peanut butter. Reese's up. Uh, Reese's the Reese's pieces. Those are awesome. I got. We have some candy in the house, but not a lot. We don't really get a lot of trick or treaters to the house. Normally, I'm working on Halloween, so this is one of the first years I'm not gonna be working. Not sure I'm gonna stay home or not. <laughs> The problem is with going out for Halloween, on Halloween, is all the crazies are out. It's an amateur night. Not exactly a night that I really want to be out dealing with a bunch of idiots uh, in a club and on the road. But, um, you know, maybe I'll go somewhere that will have a low quotient of idiots. I like that wine. I'm, I'm going to revisit that wine a little bit. Let's, let's move on to the next wine here because this wine, I've been wanting to do this wine for a long time. This is. Um, and I bought their, I want to say the high-end version because they have a really high-end version that's like 80 bucks. But I bought the higher-end version um, of this. This is Poison. And I've been wanting to try this wine. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, gimmicky again. And, you know, it's got the skull and crossbones. Um, it's got Poison. It's a Zinfandel. Uh, it also has, I believe, some Petite Syrah in it. Um, I think it's 85, well, I don't know about this vintage because they don't have 2012. Uh, this is from the uh, Armida Winery. Now, they make some pretty serious wines. Um, well, they say serious and like, like this is their fun wine. This, they, they have some fun with it. But they make some like serious wines and I read up about them. They started in 1994, I believe. It was Steve and Bruce. Can't remember the last name. Da. Anyway, um, Steve and Bruce. Pretty sure Steve and Bruce. Um, but they started this winery uh, in the 90s, and um, uh, they sourced some so they sourced some fruit from other growers. Um, some of them they have exclusive contracts with others. They they uh, the growers grow a bunch of grapes, and they're just one of the one of the ones that they sell the grapes to. Um, but uh, this particular wine is from Dry Creek Valley. Uh, 
Uh, 2011, they, if I remember right, it was 85% Zin and 15% Petite Syrah. So I don't know what the makeup is on this, but since it is a Zinfandel, uh, it has to be at least 75%. Or is California 85%? I believe California is 85%. If it says California on it, which it just says Dry Creek, Dry, Dry Creek Valley. So it has to be at least 75%. California, Texas, and Oregon all have some funky laws. I would say funky, but they have some extra criteria for some things outside of what federal law requires. One thing about some funky laws, in Texas over this, this year, but it's not just this year, but over the years, but this year it really seemed like the whole for sale in Texas only thing among wine bloggers and wine reviewers and the wineries, um, I wouldn't say came to a head, but definitely became a, a, a much hotter topic than in years past. And uh, and somebody had mentioned that we're not the only state that does this. And when I was in New Jersey, lo and behold, what did I find? For sale in New Jersey only on some of these bottles. Which was kind of funny because when talking to one of the guys at the booth, they said that they were all members of this consortium of some well, or organization, and it said that they had to have now, maybe it wasn't 100% fruit, but they had to have at least 75 or, or a certain percentage of New Jersey fruit. Well, for sale in New Jersey only means that 74, maximum of 74% of the fruit came from Jersey and at least 26% came from somewhere else. Also, federal law is that if, they, say they bought the juices, say they got the, the grapes from New York, which would make sense because New York produces actually a lot of wine. Um, relative to how much New Jersey does, um, they could, if they wanted to, say 26% of the Cabernet Sauvignon came from New York, or even they could even say, if it was from a specific AVA in New York, say Finger Lakes or Long Island, to go, they can do that, but say 26% in New York and 74% came from New Jersey because they're neighboring states. If they had gotten 26% of the grapes from California, Federal law prevents them from doing that. It's silly. Anyway, not like there are any other silly laws out there over the years. So, but uh, you know, when it comes to wine, you think that you, know, you should be able to have truth in labeling. You know, they talk about labeling laws and all this stuff, but yet, if a winemaker wanted to do that, he couldn't or she couldn't because they would legally be, or they would be violating the law by saying, "Hey, this is the percentages of what's in." You know, as far as like. Um, they could call it American wine, okay, um, and then they could list, you know, percentage from New Jersey, percentage from California. I'm not saying they can't within the label say this percentage comes from here, that, and the other, but there's a way that they label it, they would be breaking the law when they're trying to inform the consumer, so, silly. Alright, so, Poison. Been wanting to try this wine for quite a while since I've really been doing the blog. And so I'm like, oh, I'm going to do oh that's got to be a Halloween. That's got to be a Halloween wine. And then Halloween comes along. I'm like, eh, it's kind of a cheesy name. Not like any of the other ones weren't cheesy. You know, Dia de los Muertos, you know, uh, from last year, which was pretty decent. Um, saw it again this year at uh, World Market. You know, but I kept, like, putting it away. Now, oh, I'm sorry, I paid. Now, this one was the... The, the higher priced one of the cheap of the, of the two that are out there. This one I paid $18.99 and it's normally $21.99. Now they have a $10 one, it might be $9.99 list and you, you save a dollar or maybe $9.99 was the discounted price, but they have another one that's just poison. Uh, it doesn't have, um, like, you know, California, but this one has Dry Creek, so it's a little bit higher in it. All right, so uh, get the creaminess, you know, vanilla, red fruit. So to me, that tells me red pie. I, and I, I asked my staff one day about that. Does it, does, does it taste like a, does it kind of like a raspberry pie? And they're like, no. I was like, Ugh, okay. So the problem is when I describe something as like a pie, is that I'm thinking about whipped cream and creaminess and vanilla and the fruit. But when anyone else thinks about pie, they're probably thinking about crust. 
Well, there's, you know, there's no crust flavor in these wines, so you know, I'm thinking about all these other flavors that are part of a pie. So I got to be careful with this when I talk about a pie um, or use pie as a, as a descriptor. Now I'd say there's probably more of a raspberry rather than cherry um, uh, fruit to it. Maybe even a blackberry, but it's, it, it feels more red than black or blue. Like I said, there was that vanilla. Um, it's kind of blown off a little bit. Of course, it doesn't help that I can't really swirl right on this. I don't get much earth out of it, no floral. Yeah, I know, I just went through the grid and I didn't do it on the other two. Um, I don't really smell a lot of wood, but there's a little bit of wood on it. These candles are behaving this year. Remember last year's candles? Those were pretty awesome because they had like the hole going through it. Man, that was awesome. Anyway. It's really tart. And and not in a poorly made wine way. I mean, it's not like a you know, it's it's not poorly made. It's just it just has a, a a tartness to it, acidic, very acidic for a red wine. To me, I'm not used to the acid level. Um, a little bit of a little bit of tannin. Uh, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm biting into, or I feel like I can taste the, the the skins of the fruit. So it's kind of fuzzy. It's, it's got a it's got a bite to it, which would be kind of funny if it was called vampire, but it's not. Um, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside too. I mean, I can, I mean, I can really feel the alcohol on it um, as it goes down. You can kind of feel the other two. You couldn't really feel the alcohol when you swallow it, but this one you can really feel it all the way down to your stomach. Again, not a bad thing. Uh, it's pretty decent. Uh, I can tell you that it's probably the wine, it probably is about a tie between the vampire and the poison as far as how I like the wines. The cryptic is probably the wine I like the best out of, out of the three. Um, but uh, it's really fleshy with the fruit. Um, like I say, I feel like I'm, I can taste like the, or feel like the skin of, the, of a fruit. Um, I'd, honestly, I'd almost say it's kind of nectarine-like, which is weird. I wouldn't think of nectarine as something that I would get from a red wine. You know, stone fruits are usually a descriptor for white wines, but there's kind of like this, <clears throat> this juiciness, this because nectarines can kind of have a, you know, not a, you know, and peaches nectarines can kind of have a, a, um, a fleshier, uh, more robust flavor. Um, but it, it's kind of nectarine-like, really. It's it's kind of weird. Maybe also like fig, a little date and fig type of thing. Definitely get pepper. That black that black pepper type of stuff, not green peppers uh, or jalapenos, but that black pepper or um, white pepper type of thing. Um, but it's not super spicy. It's not very peppery like I've had uh, from from other Zins. Um, it's it's kind of a light body Zin. It's, you know, like I said, it's not, it's, 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 it was not as acidic now as it was when I first tried it. Um, it's not as heavy on the tannins. Um, it's not a big bold flavor, you know. It, it's it's probably because it is the the probably better qualities in. It's not as in your face, just 
bam, I'm Zinfandel, you better like me or else, okay, that your, say, $10 bottle of Zin's going to exhibit. Um, you know, it's, it's got a bit of lightness to it, if, if you could call it lightness, I don't know. Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty tasty. It's not bad. I mean, the problem is, is a $20 bottle of wine. And if you were just gonna bring it to a party and be like, oh, check it out, poison. I, I didn't have the other poison, but I'd probably, if you're going to a party, I'd probably be like, buy the $10 bottle of wine instead of the $23 or $22 bottle of wine. Um, I'd probably tell you to do that because for a party, again, everyone's going to have a good time anyway, so it doesn't matter what kind of wine you bring. If you bring a $40 bottle of wine, you're, you're kind of going to waste the wine on the party goers, okay? If you're going to like have a sit-down meal, so let's, say, let's, say, let's try that. We're going to have a sit-down meal, and we're going to have poison as our wine. You could do that. You could do that where you could actually sit there and enjoy this wine with some food, but I, I really, you know, I, I expect Zins to be a little more bold, having a little more body to it, and this, is, this feels kind of light. Um, maybe it's the vintage, maybe it's the blend, I don't know. It's pretty acidic, my mouth is watering. Okay, it is, my mouth is watering, it's pretty acidic. Um, I said the acid was really noticeable at first. Now it's not so much, but when your mouth is watering, that's usually an indication of a decent amount of acid. You know, there's even like a little bit of floral to this. It's an interesting wine. I think if this, I think this wine, over the, if I let it sit out for a while, I think it would really develop into something that was kind of neat. But, and, and, and I'm not saying I wouldn't pick it as, I wouldn't pick it as Zin in a blind tasting. Problem is I didn't do a lot of blind tasting of Zins to begin with. Um, so when I start getting serious again with the studies, should I, should I go for the advanced? I mean, seriously. I mean, I, 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 I'm probably going to, but I mean, seriously, should, should I go for the advanced? Because the thing is, you go for advanced, then it's almost expected you go for master, okay? Being a certified SOM, it's kind of like, okay, I got my certification, we're good. I, I know, you know, I've been certified that I know what I'm supposed to know about wine, um, and, and, and that's it. You go into advanced, you know, so, you know certified is like getting your bachelor's, you know, your bachelor's degree, okay? You, you did what you did, you got through your college, and blah, blah, blah. Advanced is like getting a master's, and getting your master's like getting a PhD. You you know your stuff. You get masters and advanced, and it, it's exponentially harder from what I've been told. In Tech Psalm, the uh, the best Psalm competition, you have to be a certified Psalm to do it. It's basically a way for you to kind of get a uh, a, um, a dry run of what to expect for the advanced exam. So, I don't know, maybe I'll go for that. Let me know. I know it's ultimately up my decision, but let me know. I'm thinking about doing it. I think this would be a wine I would I would love to just kind of sit back and sip and enjoy for over over a two to three hour period of time. I would probably pair it with a little bit lighter fare, probably not really heavy food. Um, honestly, I'd probably put it with like a pasta dish um, because of the acidity, to be honest. Even pizza, okay, you get that tomato sauce, you get the, the acidity with the, with the tomato sauce. I think it'd be good with that because this is not a very powerful wine that I, I don't think it is. Maybe they intended it to be, but I don't think it's a very powerful wine. So if you try to put up against, you know, powerful food, the food's gonna over, the food's gonna dominate uh, the experience. 
Um, the cryptic's actually the, the, the fuller body of, of, of the three. Um, and probably the one I like the best. So if I had to pick, if I had to pick one to bring, I'd bring the cryptic. However, if I was going for budget, I, I might I might take the Vampire Chardonnay because um, it's pretty decent. All three wines are recommends. Um, you're in the store, you're looking at getting some wine, uh, whether it's for a Halloween party or you just want to have some wine at the house. Um, any of the wines are, are definitely worth buying. Um, the the cryptics more to my my taste, uh, more to my style. Uh, the other two are good wines. Um, I wouldn't tell you that they were bad wines, so check them out. Um, let's see. That's I think. Well, as far as wines are done, as far as wines, because we're, we're done with the wines. Um, basically, took a month off in September. Took a vacation October. It's been kind of a you know hit and miss with a few things here and there. You know, uh, uh, didn't didn't start back up with the with the videos as fast as I wanted to. Uh, got the Halloween special done. I'll have a couple more episodes, and then we'll do a, we'll do the usual Thanksgiving. Do a couple episodes, then do the Christmas. Um, I don't think I'll have. Uh, like I did last year in December, have a three-day period of time where I can go uh, visit a couple of Texas wineries. I have three days off next week, or I'm sorry, this week, Halloween week, uh, in a row. Um, and last time I, I did, uh, did a little Texas winery tour, but I'm going to the Spurs game. A home opener on Wednesday night, so the day before Halloween. Um, got... The tickets are good tickets. I mean, they're not like amazing seats, but the seats are pretty good. The price was really good, so I'm very happy with that. So cannot wait for basketball season to start because my Vikings suck this year. Like a vampire. <laughs> anyway. Um, other than that, uh, so we're going to get those going. Um, episode 300 is going to be sometime next year. I was really hoping it was going to be like next month, but because of how I done all my stuff with video I've really kind of been lazy a little bit and with the studying for certified I kind of let things drop off and I really want to take that month off from doing any wine related stuff but I cannot wait to get back to doing this on a regular basis uh, episode 300 you know I've got all these grandiose ideas in my head um, which those will never happen but uh, the, the idea is to do a live stream of the actual event and then make it an event, not something at the house, but go somewhere at a live venue. Um, there's a couple places that I've, I've talked to already about um, that there's a possibility they're interested. Of course, the logistics might not work out, but at least they were open to the idea of having a live audience and a live stream of, of this it's just a matter of whether I'm doing it in a restaurant environment or in a private environment or a non-restaurant environment. And uh, the cost factor and all that great stuff because this stuff is expensive. Speaking of that, here's the time for the pitch. All right, so uh, we're basically done for, <laughs> basically done for the video. Um, hit the donate button over here to the right because my left, your right. Uh, this stuff's expensive over time. Um, I don't make a ton of money from the ads. Matter of fact, I, I finally got paid again by Blip TV, a whole 26 bucks. Anyway, um, so throw a few ducks my way so I can buy some more wine. Um, friend me up above uh, with anywhere I'm on the internet. I'm easy to find, obviously, because you already found me. Um, and tell your friends about it. That's gonna do it for the Halloween special number four. Um, Hopefully I had a really cool background behind me with the green screen, or I just made it black. I don't know. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, we'll see everyone again next time.